Hello, everybody. Howdy. We'd like to open up this uh, video with a toast to Dan and Anna. Yes. Back in uh, December 27th, we proudly put their pins into the Watchtower coffin lid. And um, in the meantime... They were hoping to just fade away. Yes. Things had uh, progressed to the point to where they were cordially invited to a uh, judicial hearing for apostasy, no less. And we know what that's like, don't we, Kim? Yeah. Because we were given, we were sent our letter of invitation to a judicial meeting, weren't Except we? Except Dan and Anna actually went to Yes. The so, yeah, unfortunately for Kim and I, we was out of town at that time, and we couldn't attend, and we were disfellowshipped anyways. <laughs> so we have a big bowl of popcorn. Yes, because Dan and Anna recorded their judicial hearing. And oh, I'll tell boy. you what, folks, it's it's almost like it's crystal clear. I mean, it's, it's a superb recording. Uh, Dan, I'm telling you, brother, you are owned <laughs> that judicial proceeding you you did <laughs> he has pretty much established dominance over them didn't he yes he did yeah yeah but we love these judicial hearing recordings because they do more damage than any of us could yeah you know meetings with these elders like we keep saying you know one meeting in the back room with these guys does more damage yeah. than anything else and you know the 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 thing is is the more of these that get recorded, the more of these that get uploaded to YouTube, it shows the Jehovah Witness community that we're no longer afraid of Watchtower. We're no longer afraid of the elders. And we're no longer afraid of these judicial hearings. And one of the reasons for that being is that the information that's being provided um, in these judicial hearings is nothing but Watchtower lies. And when Watchtower is fabricating so many lies and has fabricated so many lies, as I like to call it, manufactured ignorance, the elders sitting in these judicial committees, uh, they're, they're just... They don't know how to handle it because it's coming from their own literature. Yeah. Um, there's a few little, like, um, you'll lose the sound for like a second or two, but that's because I have um, edited out names of others and congregations and stuff, so that's why there's a little bit... You mean you edited the names out to protect the innocent? No, to protect the guilty. To protect, okay, yeah. <laughs> I was gonna say the hell with that. Just let the world hear what they who what knuckleheads these guys are. Yeah. No, the, the names have been edited out. Yeah, and the name of the congregations and stuff. Yeah. Um, but we want to thank Dan and oh, Anna. So much. You know, thank it you was guys. great skyping with you guys this morning, and thank you for the honor and privilege of being yeah. able, you know, to help you out and get this out to the world. Because I think these types of recordings are the best. Yeah. Well, there again, it just it just shows how manipulative um, these elders can be, and also it shows how they can be made to be quiet. Because when we were listening to these in Dan's argument, brother, I'm telling you, you just you just stumped them. They, they, you can they, almost hear crickets in yeah, the background. <laughs> you, honestly, you honestly could almost hear crickets because the elders. How can they answer? How can they answer? Especially when you start talking about the Royal Commission yeah. and Jeffrey Jackson. It's like, how do they defend against that? Yeah. And what I did is um, there's like the main <coughs> meeting and then they were asked to go wait in their vehicle and let the elders uh, deliberate. So yeah. what I did is between those two meetings, um, I actually put in the clip that he brings up to the elders of Jeffrey Jackson's testimony so that you can all see it firsthand, you know, the actual video of Jeffrey Jackson's testimony of what he brings up. We don't yeah. want to give anything away. But. Yeah, be well, okay, I'll, I'll hold it. Well, no, I'm going to give it away 
Because really, the crux of this judicial meeting was the fact that they put up Christmas lights and celebrated Christmas, <laughs> yeah. right? And we all heard what Jeffrey Jackson said during the Royal Commission. And so this was the crux of their being invited to their judicial meeting, even, even though they had um, indicated to the elders that they just wanted to be left alone. And that's what... That, maybe that's why this is hit so close to home because that's what we, we did wanted to do when cousin Richard come out here I said just leave us alone you know the closest kingdom hall in any direction from where Kim and I live is 50 miles at this point you know knowing what we know about watchtower in the manufactured lies we're not gonna drive 50 miles in any direction to go to a kingdom hall I mean that's just not reasonable but the fact remains is that these guys will not leave you alone until they have the personal satisfaction of either disfellowshipping you or reading your disassociation letter. Yeah. And that's sad. Yeah. But Dan and Anna did, oh, you guys did a wonderful job proud on of you this. you guys. Really am. Yeah. And, you know, very calm and yep. handled yourselves. You know, just so, perfect. Without any further ado, I yeah, guess. Yeah, let's get to get it. Your, get your popcorn, maybe get some wine, and oh, sit yeah. and enjoy. <laughs> yeah, you all enjoy. That's what happens when you dedicate your whole life to a bullshit organization. See? That, that's what happens. I, I don't know what that is, babe. Shit viewing. Yeah. I, was, I was hoping I wouldn't have to come back into this door. Mm. You know? Oh, just hold on. She's fine. She's okay. Just a little sore. Sore. Yeah. Yeah, I can imagine. Fell right on her butt. Six feet up. Right on, so onto the hardwood. Yeah. 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 Her mom fell off a ladder in the house, oh. getting things off the okay. shelf. Run her tailbone. Oh, yeah. That lasts yeah. a while. Apparently, she didn't break anything, but. I remember one time Holly fell down. We were at a condo in Florida. It was like three flights of wooden stairs right on her tailbone like Ooh. I'll bruise it up. Going down <laughs> I'll bruise it up. Oh, yeah. Well thank you so much for meeting with us. We yep. appreciate very much. We uh, um, appreciate you guys for, for making the time and, and coming here. So um, it'd be appropriate. Uh, first of all we can't record this so hopefully the phones or anything in that we put ours in our, our briefcases and stuff but nothing can be recorded. So. Okay. Um, if you can abide by that, that'd be wonderful. And uh, we're going to ask for Jehovah's direction. Kaylee, would you do that for us, please? Jehovah, we uh, approach you here this evening. We uh, uh, certainly ask for your uh, blessing and your spirit to be upon us as we uh, have this discussion to, uh, this evening. And uh, we ask that uh, we always are uh, mindful of uh, our service to you. And uh, we know that... Uh, there are uh, many things that uh, Satan has in this system of things to uh, distract us from that. So help us that uh, we can be mindful of those. Help us to really to have a discussion uh, with one another openly and uh, ultimately uh, be able to uh, uh, discern your word, the Bible. We thank you for the many blessings that we have. We 
ask this prayer through your son, Christ Jesus. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Um, to get it off to a, a scriptural thought, there's um, James chapter 5 is uh, something here because um, we're asking for Jehovah's direction as our prayer is here. And we're concerned, you know, in regards to um, some of your actions and such, you know, of, of the path that you're going down, and hence the reason why we're getting together, you know, of, of what we're having here. And the reason, the scriptural reason that we actually have of that is basically at James chapter 5. Um, and it's talking about there verses 13 and 14, um, or I should say 14 and 15. It mentions there that is, if there's anyone sick among you, let them call the elders of the congregation to him. Let them pray over him, applying oil to him in the name of Jehovah. And the prayer of faith will make the sick one well, and Jehovah will raise him up. Also, if he has committed sins, it, he will be forgiven. So, um, as you know, based on is that um, doing your celebration of different holidays and such, that is a form of apostasy. And that's the reason why we're here today um, it, it's basically on that mm -hmm. um, and we're, we're concerned that you know we've seen you or you know we see you partaking of that um, which is going right against what Jehovah's Word has said and making sure that you realize that and is that the path that you really want to follow Dan right so right I understand um, I guess obviously we're here to I, I haven't talked to either of you when you've come by because we're just trying to leave quietly but obviously it's hit this point to where there needs to be a discussion um, so where the ju judicial committee is for apostasy of holidays is that that's essentially right. yeah, it's a form of apostasy where, where we're at um, what what I've got <clears throat> which I don't want you guys to think I'm coming in bringing apostate material, apostate letters. I have, in the past year, done much looking into thinking, research into the witnesses from the time of when they started to now. Okay. So everything I have here is the witnesses material that I've put together and logically thought about. Okay. Um, so I guess, <clears throat> obviously we're here for me to express to you guys where I'm at. Um, and is this, this is this similar for Anna's thinking as well, for both of you, speaking for both? Mm -hmm. She can okay. chime in, okay. yes. Um, What I have is, I guess, two things I'd like to express to you guys. Starting out, there were things that I've noticed throughout my 30 years of being a witness that got me thinking. From that, that allowed me to take a step back and look logically at the the big picture the, the organization everything okay um, what I'm going to say I'm not expecting or wanting a comment or sure. a justification or a rebuttal or anything okay. feel free to chime in that's fine um, that's welcome but that's that's not why I'm saying it I'm telling you where our minds are at. And I can speak for her, I think, because we speak all the time. It's where our minds are at. Sure. Um, after getting this letter, and after you guys stopped by, it was interesting being drug in for apostasy. Being, did, did you guys watch the Royal Commission of Jeffrey, Jeffrey Jackson in Australia? The interrogation, the interviewing, it's about a two-hour interrogation of Jeffrey Jackson, governing body member. I no, I have not. It's a shame because he's representing you, brothers. He's representing you. And you don't know what he's saying. So 
I've watched it. It's upsetting. And what kind of stuck out to me, being brought in on, on apostasy, Stuart, the interviewer, asked him, quote, for example, if they, or a Jehovah's Witness member, had become inactive or sought to fade without family disassociating, formally disassociating, and the elders came to visit and found them celebrating Christmas or a birthday, they would be found to be in transgression of the rules, would they not? So that's the question posed. Everybody should know the answer. I've been a witness for 30 years. Of course it is. Of course it is. It shocked me watching his reply. That is not my understanding. But again, as I said, it's not my field. And this is, you can draw, draw it up and watch it. This is just a little insert from it. It's not my field that goes into uh, policy with regard to those type of things, but from my personal experience, that is not the case. Yes, it's the case. Of course it's the case. You guys know that. How do you stand there in front of the commission and say that's not the case? Is it saving face? What is it? So it's confusing. It's confusing. I'll I'll move on through That's fine. You, you what what I've 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 been thinking and, and researching unless you guys want to interject. No, we just want to see how you got down to this path. Sure. You know, Dan, and, and there's some way. Go ahead. No, I'm just going to say I, I can't speak to that. Um, I haven't seen it, nor do I know the circumstances around it, um, nor do I know how you even interpreted that. And well, that's we that's pretty spot on. Things and interpret things do you know what the Royal Commission is in Australia, mm -hmm. what it's dealing with? It's dealing with child abuse cases and the complete lack of legal things that they let the witnesses let slide just in Australia alone and they ha found a thousand and six cases where it was not taken to the authorities it was dealt with in the congregation these people had to be in the same congregation with the people with the men that raped them and they have the witnesses in Australia have gotten in big trouble for it. And it's, it's a big deal. And it's not hearsay. And, and I feel badly that the three of you have not even looked into that. It's a huge problem in Australia. It's a huge problem everywhere. But it's coming out in Australia now. Um, so that's being tried on apostasy. That's confusing, being that a governing body member said, that's not how I understand it. So, interesting. Um, what got us down this path? There was, there was things that got me thinking, wait a minute, what's going on? Um, there's always new light. New light. You know, everything's changing. New light. Mm -hmm. if, if you really look at new light and you compare it to the doctrine that's been there, it's not new light, it's changes, it's full changes. And it's hard to swallow. Um, there's infighting and disunity within every congregation. And it's interesting because the claim of being God's people, when you look at the hushed disunity that's surrounding the congregations. How can this be God's people if every congregation has this weird disunity? And it's there. And I know you see it. I know you do. It's there. Um, what really allowed me to step back and evaluate the whole case was we went into that elders meeting and we walked in with her guilty. She was guilty. And the brothers in there knew it. At one point, one of the brothers was standing up like this. Where were you and him meeting? Whoa. Whoa. 
step back, hang on. I thought these were God's men. I thought they were acting on trying to find truth, get to the bottom of things. I walked out of that meeting thinking, I gotta evaluate the 30 years that I put into this because that was not God's hand. That was not God's men. And, and what's funny is she was called into a judicial meeting, which I believe should end in reproof or disfellowship, right? A ju judicial meeting. It can be disbanded as well. Well, then it was disbanded because the accusations were none. Um, so those are the things that got me thinking, wait a Us. minute, got me. She's been, she's been thinking that for a while, quietly, but not wanting to upset me because I believed it wholeheartedly until I took a step back and logically and reasonably looked at things. And I've got four points of things that are bothersome. And these points are comparisons of originally where the witnesses were at and where they're at now. So this is nothing from the outside. This is nothing from scientists or whoever. Um, Rutherford's children's book. You guys familiar with that? 41, 1941, it's a little book. You know, purple or pink or whatever. So that book, he writes that book in a convention, big convention, calls the kids up front. In there, no children were taken on Noah's Ark or were born on the Ark. This would show it to be proper to wait until after Armageddon to bring children into this world. It is only a few years from the time the other sheep are gathered to the Lord until Armageddon. Those who have infants during Armageddon will have much greater woe it would be far greater difficulty to care for them during the Great Tribulation. So he told those kids, don't have kids, don't get married, Armageddon's coming now. Does that affect people's lives? Did that ruin those kids' lives? Honestly, brothers, did that ruin their lives? If they didn't get married and have kids, all three of you are married and you have kids. They thought they were doing what God wanted. Rutherford, Rutherford took his interpretation. He made it doctrine. He made that doctrine. But do the witnesses still follow that doctrine now? Let's go back to these kids who listened to that. Do you think all of them listened to him? They should have because that was told to them that but was it based on the Bible? Because that's really what, what, what the source of everything that we have is not, you know, these men might have, have penned some of these books, but bottom line is, isn't it what God's Word says? And, and I guess that's what I'm looking at is the witnesses derived from Rutherford. Rutherford took the, witness, the Bible students, they, he took the Bible students, made them the witnesses, brought the kids up, said, this is what's happening. That's your guys' background. That was my background. That's my dad's background, my grandpa's background. Right. That is the history. Did you guys know of that before I just told you? Like, that book was 41. That was before I was alive. I know. That's the point. So you're, you're pushing this. You're still pushing it, even though you don't even know where it came from. I don't think we, we're pushing We know that. a lot of things that they like they celebrate birthdays, holidays, and Christmas, and openly they don't hide from the fact that they've done it, but it was a mistake. And then once they realized they wasn't Well, right, what else is a mistake then? We all Us remember. getting in hauled in for apostasy. We that all, could be a mistake That could be a mistake 10 years from now. Who knows? That could be new, the no, next new life. Don't even. But mm -hmm. right now, it's not. It's, it's, <laughs> right, so <laughs> follow it. So, now. yeah. And right hang, then. Hang on. So I follow, so follow it. Yeah, me. from the reason of of us being here and you can go through and you can pick little points from 40 50 100 years no, ago we'll give, okay but that's not the reason why we're here and, um and I'm sure can we get right back to that can i work through the things that like i said these things are from the witnesses i'm not trying to tell you guys apostate things i'm comparing 
where the witnesses were and where they are now. So how did you find out about what Rutherford said on that, Dan? Do you have that publication? I've got the PDF of it. I've got the PDF of it. I got any publication I want out there. Okay. Um, blood use. I'll, I'll be quick on this because we don't have all night. There was a time, no blood. You couldn't have blood. It's derived from the scripture. It's holy, it's sacred. Dump it on the ground. Not anymore. Now you can take it, split it apart, use fractions. Who's responsible for the people that died when the witnesses said, you can't have any blood? Who's responsible for that? It's either the witnesses or God, because there's no in-between. Who takes responsibility for that? Who's accountable? Okay. Who's accountable? That's the point. It's a, hard, it's a hard question to ask, but if you ask it, there's an answer. Um, this is disgusting. The letter to the elders of November 6, 2014, which I'm sure you guys have, it's disgusting. Okay. I've read through it and highlighted a few things that or bothersome, but the, the main point that stands out to me that is so bothersome. In some cases, the elders will form a judicial committee to handle alleged wrongdoings that may also constitute a violation of criminal law, e.g. murder, rape, child abuse, fraud, theft, assault. Generally, the elders should not delay the judicial committee process, but strict confidentiality must be maintained to avoid unnecessarily Enta unnecessary entanglement with secular authorities who may be conducting a criminal investigation of the matter. Somebody comes to you with child abuse, with any of these things, don't tell the authorities even if they're asking because that's unnecessary. It's immoral. It's against the law. You guys aren't detectives. Nobody, nobody's detectives. The witnesses aren't detectives. Keep it from them? It's sick. It's sick. And, and this whole letter is... But, referring but, to the matter of the judicial hearing. committee itself, not to the facts that the authorities need. Um, actually, if you go back one page, it's not. Because even when secular authorities request confidential information, you're not obligated to answer questions. you got to contact the legal department first. So don't tell authorities. It, it's gross. It's gross. It, it's gross. And, and what's, what's funny is that's why this, these letters are so guarded. Destroy your old ones. Protect this. Don't show anybody. It, it, if half the congregation could read this letter, they would go, wait a minute, that's gross. That's why they can't read it. That's why it's protected. Um, 1914, I'm not even getting into that. As a kid, you're taught, as a kid I was taught, you won't. You won't live to the end of days. The world's going to be end, ending in 1914 based on the 607, which is disproved by every scientist, every historian. Historian Makes no sense. It doesn't. And, and that's why as history went on, time goes on, it's disproven itself because at first it was generation 1914 will not die. Um, the, the, the generation of 1914 that was conscious, so it was like 10 or 11 years old, they kind of based it on, if they were old enough to reason on it, that generation will not pass. Then it was bumped to, if you were born in at 1914, that generation won't pass. The latest one of the overlapping generation makes no sense. It bought the society another 90 years to come up with whatever changes they need. Um, and so... These are all a bunch of things that have just made you come down this path, it sounds like, Dan, is that question, these different things that question in your mind. Here in the it, it's, right? it's a lot of questions, and if you logically and reasonably step back and think about these without 
pulling the blanket card of new light and faith and trust in Jehovah, without any of those blanket cards, none of this makes sense. None of it. And, and I would beg you guys to explain to me how it does make sense without the blanket statements of what I just mentioned. You know, I, I think that um, it all goes back to what the Bible has to say is what we base it on. I mean, that, that's the bottom line is that, you know, um, you see a lot of good that the organization has done, but ultimately it's what are the scriptures really going to teach us? Okay, right. well, where in, the, <laughs> where in the Bible does it say you're going to get disfellowshipped for celebrating Christmas? Well, let's, what's the origin of Christmas? What's the origin of your wedding ring? Pagan. Well, you know... Um, that, but, like, li literally, stop for a minute and think of that. What's the origin of the wedding ring? But, I don't know. So That's the point. It's so pagan, asked, but it's, it's acceptable in this culture. You asked about the origin of Christmas in the Bible. So, so when was that started? It's, we don't need to go down that path. I'm, 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 we, we've I, been yeah, raised witnesses. We're 30 years deep. We know whatever the pagan holiday we, thing is. So is it has nothing to do with Jesus <clears throat> so for us. So based on the information you have here, are, are you saying that you no longer want to be one of Jehovah's Witnesses? What I'm saying is... we We have been very quiet, and we just... We have we walked away. We stopped. We're uh, we just want. Here, here, to here's the deal. We're if obviously none of you and nobody who's witnesses does any sort of logical thinking on where they came from, what they taught, the damage they did, where they're at now. You can't because you're told not to. You don't even know the book that they. That the, that the guy that started this, you didn't even know the book he wrote or what he did to the people before you because you're not taught to. You're taught to follow what you're doing now. New light, here's the new thing, get rid of the old, on to the next. If you step back and you look at it, none of it makes sense. None of it makes sense. The 1914 thing is, is tripping a lot of people because it was always a hard... It was always a hard date. And now it's, hang on, we can have an overlapping generation. Wait a minute. That's new light. Don't worry about it. Just go preach. End's coming. New light. Go. So with, with, with what I've found, what I know, no, I will never come back. Ever come back. My kids will never be in. But with that being said, Everything that I've gathered, it was only for my mind to make a decision for me and my family, to remove my kids, to get them out of it. So where I'm at also is I've got parents, grandparents, uncles, aunts. I've got a whole extended family in this. I haven't talked to any of them on it. Do you know why? Because I don't want to do that. I'm not trying to change anybody's mind. I am changing my kids' future. Honestly, if I didn't have kids and I found this, I'd just go because it would be easier. Because I wouldn't want to be kicked out from my family, from people that I've known for years and they scowl at you. I'd go because it's easier. But I'm taking the brunt because my kids aren't going to deal with it. What I want is to be able to just walk away quietly and be left alone is what I want. That's why I just said, you know, when you're coming by, just nothing, don't want to talk, just be done, just be done. I haven't told a soul. I'm not starting no trouble. I'm not. But now that I'm drugging into this judicial committee, 
troubles brought to me. And I don't want a disfellowshipping. I don't want a disassociation. I want to be able to go on my way quietly, have a surface relationship with my family, not including anything religious-wise, and just live my life. Um, that's where we're at. So you haven't reached out to not any non-family members or anything like that of, you know, maybe individuals who are inactive or any other individuals of, of hindering them or that, hey, don't go back or anything of that nature? No. No. I love I've, you and I have you. We're, we're hanging out with our friends that we have outside of the witnesses, our family that we're associating with. It's a family-based relationship, and that's that. And I don't want you to think that we brought you here for trouble. That, well, that wasn't the re regardless. Intention. Here, hang on. Let's let's to... back up. Let's back up. In accord with your wishes, not sudden by, we invite both of you to a judicial hearing at the at the Kingdom Hall. So this hearing is due to your practice of apostasy. That is trouble. That is trouble. That that's that's life changing trouble. Yes, it is. So I think so, so yes. But ultimately, continue. we're going to disagree in our stance of where we're at at this time. And it sounds very clear that you've completely separated yourself from Jehovah's Organization. So, what about this arrangement is causing the heartache if you want nothing to do with it? The the heartache is that. We were removing ourselves quietly, removing ourselves. What's causing the heartache is we get this letter certified, signed by three brothers to come in. That's the heartache. Do you know why we sent the letter? To bring us in for a judicial committee. The last time we were at your house, you told us not to come back. And, and, and I would, what, but you didn't respect that because as opposed to just walking away and not coming back, we get a letter for the Judicial Committee. But we're, our responsibility as brothers is also to keep the congregation away from any type of influence that are in, a, in accordance with Job as well. Mm -hmm. So individuals see that you're celebrating different um, holidays um, and, and such, you know, they need, you know, they, we have to protect them so right. that they're not contaminated. Right. Right? Yeah. So I understand that. And, and I want to make a statement as well. I'm passionate when I talk. I harbor no bad feelings towards the three of you at all. We, we, um, we know that, Dan. Uh, I, we, I hope you know I that. I hope you know that. You're, you're, that. you're doing your direction from the and, branch. And that's the so. point I was trying to make. We, we, <clears throat> this isn't a, a personal thing that we're trying to... Because we're mad or anything. Oh, like no. I, right. I you're you to feel you're under direction. Well. You're under direction. Right. You know, it's, it's under Jehovah's direction, really, you know, based on what the scriptures tell you, us. Right? You have your opinion on that. Yes. Right. Yes, you do. Okay. And, and that's it because we want to protect the sheep also. Right. I mean, type of thing. That's if why we are gonna, not. That's why that's we have why we no removed friends. That's why we ourselves. We, we're. Boop. And I we understand. But, plucked ourselves but you're out. not. We don't want you taking away. Dan's parents and my mother. And that. But, but we're not taking them away. Your actions are taking no. them away. No, that's not no, true. No, that's not true. No. But, you know, that, that's what it boils down to. Is no, it's not. So I guess we, we've covered everything. What's going to happen? Well, we need to deliberate. You know, we need to talk. Deliberate away. And I'm going to tell you, here's, here's the options you got. Here is our dissociation letters. Um, I don't want you guys to take those. May I look at them? You can look at them. Okay. I want those to go with us. I want you guys to leave us alone. We've removed ourselves from the congregation. We're done. But those letters go in, then there's problems with our family. Then there's problems. My parents, my grandparents, my aunt and uncles, who I don't speak nothing about spiritual things too, but it's going to remove my family. That's a problem. The, the things that I've, th this is only a tip of the iceberg 
of the things that bother me about the witnesses. And that are facts. And they're facts. You can say Satan, but when the facts come from the history of the witnesses, it's the witnesses, not it's Satan. It's not just history. It's so there, if those letters go in, there will be problems for this hall. There will be picketing in front with signs about harboring child molesters. I'll pass out your elders' letters. There will be problems because my quiet leaving will turn me pissed if my family tries to get taken from me. Pissed. Like you would not fucking believe. Pissed. I want to be left alone. That's why I removed myself. Okay. That's why I removed myself. And I couldn't remove myself because you kept dragging me back in. That's why we're here. Social media. The, the books, the letters that you guys think nobody has, I get any one of them. We have your elders book right on her phone. Do you know why? Because there's elders, there's governing body members who realize that this is a crock of beans, but they can't get out because they're so deep, they'll lose their family. So what are they doing? Feeding everyone the information to try to take it down. I haven't told anybody this, and I don't even care until it gets personal and you try to take my family. Then I care. And it will affect patients when people are standing there with signs. And I've already lined out people that realize the damage, and we will be there. Well, I guess that's your freedom, that's your right. That's exactly right. So I hope you send me I home with these letters, and I hope I never talk to any of you again, is what I hope. And it hurts me to say this to you, because I love you. But you're being directed by them. Well, I don't feel that way, you know. But I, I, I know I, you don't because you're you got the veil over your eyes. And I appreciate you for taking the time to let us know what you know the, what led you guys down this course, you know, because that we, we didn't want to assume or be mm -hmm. presumptuous or anything of that nature, you know, of where you have that, you know. As I mentioned to you at your doorstep, you know, you two have always been very dear to me, you know, um, and, um, but I, under, I, I have to, we have to make a decision based, you know, on, on God's word as well, though, you know, type yeah. of thing here. So, and um, anything else that we can nope. go over? And don't leave or anything. We, nope, we that's need that. To be ready. I, I hope we can just leave and be done with it because it's, it's going to get stinky for everybody. And honestly, if you take the letters and that's the route it goes, if I could save two people from walking in this front door, it's worth it. And it's a shame none of you even know your own organization. It's a shame. You don't know what's going on in Australia. You don't know what's going on anywhere because just focus on what they feed you. It's a shame. So deliberate. Um, We'll let you go out this way so you don't have to go through the hall just as a private confidential thing. I'll text you if that's okay. Uh, Are we gone now? Or? No, no. It, we're, I think we're going to meet here a little bit and wait in your car. That's okay. Yep. And um, thanks for not recording this. I appreciate it. Yep. So, so. And then I'll text you your name at the end when we're ready to talk to you. Um, that's fine. I got my personal phone in the truck. Oh, okay. That's fine. Okay. And so, for example, if they had become inactive or sought to fade without formally dissociating, uh, and the elders came to visit and found them celebrating Christmas or a birthday, they would be found to be in transgression of the rules, would they not? Uh, that is not my understanding. Uh, uh, but again, as I said, it's not my field. Uh, that goes into policy with regard to uh, uh, those type of things. Uh, but from my personal experience, that's not the case. If they're watching, they'll see All right, you. second go round. Let's do this. Recorder on. That could happen.
No. Kidding me. Out of the truck, we're good. Um, the decision is pending um, right now. Um, we we need to discuss this further, and it's going to take some time. And uh, we don't want to keep you out in the truck too long. You know what I mean in regard to that. So, Appreciate that. Um, so we um, we want to we're going to continue to think, you know discuss it and such of that nature. Uh, we'll give these back to you at now, but we're going to ask you probably to come back at a later date. Um, probably what will happen is once your decision's made, can I fax those over? Because I'm not wasting another evening on this. It's either take the letters or don't. That's it. So you can have time to think about it, and I'll email or fax or whatever them over. Okay. That's fine. Okay. That's fair. Yeah. Yep. That's fair. And I, I hope you brothers know I'm, I'm not trying to cause trouble for anybody. I just want to take my family of four and live our life. That's what I want. Mm -hmm. And I hope you realize that if we get tossed into a mix to where our family is getting taken away, I've got plenty of time and assets to put towards trying to teach as many people as I can about the damaging factors of this organization. You leave me alone, you say, have a good life, and I take my letters and I leave, that's it. My mouth's sealed. We're done. I have no hard feelings. Because I feel like that would be you guys respecting my wishes, my freedoms of worshiping God however I please. But if you don't, that feels like a personal attack. And I will fight back. And I will fight back for the rest of my life. I will fight back. So you start messing with somebody's family, that's their life. I think um, we're very clear on where you stand, Dan. I think we are. Okay. And uh, we appreciate you making the time, and we'll get back to you promptly. Excellent. Okay. Love you, Steve. I do. Okay. Bye, guys. Hey, how you guys, doing? How you guys doing? I'm doing yeah. well. How about you? Doing all right. How you been? Doing fairly been? fine. Have you? Okay. You got a meeting downstairs? Yep. Every now and again. <laughs> Every now and again. <laughs> Bye. Oh, this has been a great recording. I'm telling you. Boy, me. what a conclusion. Talk about changing the game. Changing the rules. You know... Dan, the way you stood up and told them the way it was going to be is is just perfect. Um, because, you know, if they disfellowship you, the consequences are they're going to um, hold your family as hostage. But I really love what you told them. If they do take actions, the consequences are going to be, I'm going to tell everybody what's going to happen. You know, I'm going to tell everybody what this organization is doing. I've got the time. I've got the resources. You know what? This is what Watchtower hates the most is the fact that its members like you, like Kim and I, everyone else in YouTube doing videos is we're standing up in it and we're telling them we're not going to take it no more. You guys, we don't fear this governing body and quite honestly, we don't fear the God Jehovah that you've been throwing in all our faces all our lives. Because there's nothing to fear when it comes to a loving God. But you've also not weaponized our family, but you've also weaponized God against us. And that weapon don't work no more. Yeah. And I love how they said, no, we're not going to take your family away. Your actions are. And it's like, that's ad hominem, that's, you know. Yeah. And that's just the way elders do. They just turn it around and it's like deflecting. It's like, no, it's your fault. No, 
Dan and Anna are not the ones that set the policy to have, you know, don't even talk to your family if they're disfellowship or disassociated. You know, don't even email or text to see how they're doing. You know, Dan and Anna, the rest of us, did not do that. Right. That was Watchtower policy. Well, it was also Watchtower <clears throat> that came up with false dates. It was Watchtower that manipulated other, um, other work to manufacture a lie, like, again, the cross, um, doing what they did with um, profess, um, Professor, Singh? Professor Rama Singh, misquoting him, putting it in an Awake magazine and selling it as if it was the absolute truth. Watchtower, people like us, people like Dan and Anna, we're not manufacturing the lies. You people are, not us. We're now finally catching the lies and we're standing up to it and then you've got your little henchmen body of elders thinking that they can exercise authority over us it's not working no more is it watchtower well that's why i like the part where he brought up rutherford's children's book yeah you know and how at that convention and he was telling them not to have children even up until recent times that policy has always been an unprinted uh thought you know, because look at a lot of young people have had taken yeah. um, actions to, you know, yeah. have birth control permanently. We limited our family to one and then I went and had the vasectomy because, you know, we don't want to be raising too many kids when we're so close to the end of this system of things, right? And now here my daughter is pushing 30. Wow, do you know how many other kids we could have had if we weren't listening to the Watchtower bullshit about the end of this system? Well, Shyla and James, it's heartbreaking. Yeah, it's very they, heartbreaking that for them. they did that, and yeah. now they want children, and unfortunately, it can't be reversed. So this organization <clears throat> has affected the lives of people in ways that are just now getting exposed to the world. And I found it interesting that as Dan was quoting from Rutherford's book, these elders didn't even know that this book existed. Where did you get that? Yeah. It's like, my goodness. Does it matter? Yeah. Yeah. This is, this is what I get. keep saying, how ridiculous and idiotic this religion is. But yet, even in the face of the evidence that is presented to any body of elders, even our friend Mike up in Colorado, he admitted to Kim that he's heard everything the apostates have had to say, and yet he still chooses to believe the manufactured lie. That's how ignorant these people have become. Yeah. Well, I also like the part where they asked Dan and Anna if they've talked to any inactive ones or ones who have faded away. What does it what matter? What does that matter? Oh, it does matter because they this want to is try to get those ones because back. see this is what Kim and I when we first started doing YouTube videos we we came to the realization right away that we we can't wake anybody up if you're going to wake up it's going to be because of something that you yourself have observed and the conflict starts within you yeah first and our main goal was to put out videos to show those that left 10, 15, 20 years ago, or even five years ago, that even think that they want to come back to this organization, they're going to find us on YouTube, and then they're going to hear what we're saying. Those are the ones that I want to stop from getting back to the organization, because those people have already been hurt, they've already been uh, manipulated, and that manipulation needs to stop. And it stops by preventing them from getting back into those Kingdom Hall seats. You know, people are free to believe what they want. But they should at least be, um, they should at least know the facts behind of what they're believing. Yeah. So what we're going to do is at the end we are going to put a clip of some other stuff that Jeffrey Jackson said. Because we think this is very important. I would love to see every witness on the planet watch I mean, if nothing else, just Jeffrey Jackson's testimony yeah. from the Australian Commission. Yeah, because, I mean, he, he he literally does Watchtower a disservice, doesn't he? Oh, yeah. 
absolutely does Watchtower a disservice. Yeah, exactly. And so. I really hope that these three elders that served on Dan and Anna's judicial committee that admitted they hadn't watched these hearings in Australia, I really hope that they take the time to watch them. And maybe one day they're going to know exactly how Dan and Anna feel being on the other side of the hot seat. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, Dan and Anna, I want to thank you personally for allowing Kim and I to have the privilege for honoring us because I'll say it here and I've said it before, we're just a couple of knuckleheads on, on YouTube. You know, thank you so much for the privilege in honoring us and we hope that many other ex-Jehovah's Witnesses and current Jehovah's Witnesses and those that left several years ago will have an opportunity to see how well you presented your argument and mm -hmm. how you actually, you know, made the elders shut up. <laughs> that's hard to do. I, that's huh? hard to do. Yeah, so <laughs> thank you guys so much. Yes, and uh, we hope you all have a great weekend and... Uh, we're going to go back and enjoy some more popcorn. And more wine. That's right. <laughs> Bye. Bye. Well, I've, I've chosen my words deliberately, uh, Mr. Jackson. Okay. If, if someone no longer wants to be known as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, they oh, must then dissociate. Yes. Is that right? Uh, well, again, please... Uh, if they want to take the action of doing that, but of course they have total freedom if they don't want to apply to officially be uh, removed as one of Jehovah's Witnesses, they can tell anyone they want that they're no longer a Jehovah's Witness. All right, so if we action applies to the action taken by a person who, although a baptized member of the congregation, deliberately repudiates his Christian standing, reject rejecting the congregation by his actions, or by stating that he no longer wants to be recognized as or known as one of Jehovah's Witnesses. So is it the case then that someone who no longer wants to be recognized as or known as one of Jehovah's Witnesses uh, must then disassociate? Uh, no, it doesn't say they must do anything. Uh, if you read on, you'll see there's a process. Uh, this gives the person the right to officially have an announcement made that they're no longer one of Jehovah's Witnesses. But as I already said, if they decide they don't want to exercise that right, uh, they don't automatically come under this provision. The point we've, we've got to then is that, as I understand it, is that uh, a person who's become inactive and wishes merely to remain inactive uh, is still subject to the organization's rules and discipline, not so. Uh, you want to come back, but we don't we don't run a police state where we go and try and force people to follow our, our, uh, our beliefs. Well, the point is if, for example, the elders visited and found the person to be living in sin in the eyes of the Jehovah's Witnesses, then uh, the elders would, following the process and procedures, uh, discipline that person under the rules of the organization, not so. Uh, yes. Then either they must disassociate or they'll be disfellowshipped. Uh, that would be in, in that particular case, but I can think of many scenarios where it wouldn't be. And it's right, isn't that in the case of both disassociation and disfellowshipping, the remaining members of the Jehovah's Witnesses cannot associate with the disassociated or disfellowshipped person? Yes, that's according to the Bible principles, which I'm sure you've already read. And that it's even <clears throat> family members not living in the same household. Freedom from the organization on the one hand and friends, family and social network on the other. Uh, I thought I made it quite clear that I don't agree with that uh, supposition. Mr. Jackson, the reality of the situation is is that one, a person who's been baptized a Jehovah's Witness is thereafter either in the organization or out of it. Is that not right? I think perhaps you've uh, got your facts a little wrong there. Well, I, I, I don't think that's correct because you've accepted 
already, Mr. Jackson, that a person in the situation you've postulated of merely becoming inactive is still subject to the rules of the organization? Uh, yes. Well, it's right then, isn't it? Because if they don't want to be subject to the discipline and rules of the organization, then they have to leave by actively dissociating. Isn't that the truth? Uh, that's if they definitely don't want to be, yes. And, Mr. Jackson, you, you've put it that they have a choice uh, to leave or not to leave. For someone who wants to leave, perhaps because they've suffered abuse by someone in the organization and don't feel that it's been treated properly or adequately, it's a very difficult choice, isn't it? Because they must choose. I agree with that. And it can yes. be... It can be a very cruel choice for them, not so. I agree. It's a difficult choice. And it can be personally devastating because they can lose their whole social network and their families. Uh, that can be the case, yes. Would you accept then that putting people to that choice through this system of disassociating from them or shunning, as it's sometimes referred to, is contrary to the Jehovah's Witness belief in freedom of religious choice? Uh, no, I don't accept that. Uh, I think you're jumping to a conclusion there, but I understand that you have that opinion. Mr. Jack, you were baptized at age 13, am I right? I certainly was, yes. And there are, in fact, many Jehovah's Witnesses who are baptized at an age even younger than that? Uh, there have been some I have met that have been baptized younger. And do you consider that at that age, someone is old enough and mature enough to make a decision affecting the rest of their lives? Uh, yes, I do in some cases, obviously. But I've worked with people that have been baptized when they were 11 and they have stuck by that determination their whole life. Well, that may be because they can't leave the organization without leave, leaving behind everyone whom they know. Uh, anything is possible. Mm. You see, let's take someone who's baptized at at a young age and then as lie elsewhere and they want to choose some other system of belief they then still going to be faced with the stark choice that we've identified aren't they that's true so on that basis i suggest to you that that policy and practice of your organization is in conflict with the jehovah's witnesses belief as you've said it it is in freedom of religious choice? And uh, no, we don't see it that way, but you're entitled to your opinion. And do you accept that putting people to that choice <clears throat> makes your organization, in many respects, a captive organization? I do not accept that at all. <laughs>